So, I'm going to show you today how to use a a um, image as a reference and then create that environment within World of Warcraft with the WoW Machinima tool. So, I'm going to place myself over here. And let's find a reference frame now. Google and let's try Far Cry Water and let's take this one. So let's say we have this one as a reference image and we want to replicate this uh, um, environment inside World of Warcraft with the new features of the World of Warcraft Machinima tool. <coughs> So the first thing I'm going to do is, of course, to enable the C environment thing here. And the first thing I'm going to start with is the top sky color. Now, a brand new feature of the new World of Warcraft Machinima tool is that you can use uh, a uh, eyedropper or color picker, as some might call it. Uh, what you do is you hook it down the control key and you click a button that you want to uh, color um, pick on. So let's say this one top sky color, hold down control and click on it. So now I'm color pick mode and then I pick the color up here as top sky. Then we will take the mid sky color, this one. Whoops, that was wrong. I have to hold down control and do it. And let's pick this color right here. And Actually, it's a bit cloudy, so we cannot see much going on. So let's just uh, set the cloud density to zero. So we can see what's going on. And then we need the low sky color. And I guess this would be the one, maybe. Maybe um, let's try something a little bit lighter than that. Something like that. Okay. So that's pretty good, actually. Um, I actually love this one to be a little bit more bluish color. Uh, let's just put down the saturation. Oh, I cannot do that. Let's just try to pick another one from here. Something like that. Okay, maybe this horizon line is a bit too heavy. So what I can do now is the new slider we got here. It's screen glow, which allows me to take full screen glow, like the one inside the... Uh, the costume setting, there's this enhanced glow. It's the same feature, just with a slider. So you just put it down a bit and match the screen a little bit more, I guess. The other color was a bit better. Something like that, okay. So now what we're going to do is put in some clouds. The cloud density, we put it to 1.3 maybe. Didn't change anything, let's try 0 0.4. That was a bit better. So now we have some clouds. Uh, let's take the lightest clouds, or the most white ones. We'll take uh, this one as a reference. Then we need the uh, the mid color, and we need the dark color. Just around here. So as you can see, it's a bit bright right now. It doesn't really look like the one over here. So what we can do is this new slider here which allows me to change the, uh, the, color pri the priority of, um, of colors. So when you turn this one down, it will take the darkest colors and then make all of the colors a little bit darker. So once I do this, you can see it starts making them darker and all the way down here, it's, it's a bit too much. So let's just put it up a bit. One of the other new features is that um, this, things work, this thing works in real time now. Before we had to just pick one color and hit OK. Now you can do this in real time. So as I change this, as you can see, the color changed instantly. This is actually not a good way to show it. Um, the best way to show it is actually with the fog color. So as you can see, once I slide around, it instantly updates. So let's just put that color back and let's set the cloud color to something a little bit darker here. And let's set the cloud density up to 0 0.5, actually. Maybe that's a little bit better. Something like that. Uh, let's look around. 
So that looks a little bit like what we are seeing here. The other thing is the the fog color is it was actually a bit better than the first one, but let's just pick something like this. It was actually a bit too dark. Again, it's much easier now because we have this direct real-time control over the color, so we can just adjust that to how we want it. So let's say something like that is perfect. Um, one thing that's missing now is the water. And as you can see, there are some new sliders just underneath the, the water um, colors here. And uh, let's just see how... Okay. Um, and these sliders allows me to change the transparency of the water. So if I put this one down, suddenly the water's all gone. So you just slide around to change the opacity. And this also for... Um, this also a slider for this one. Sort of the lake edge color. So uh, let's just try to match the colors here. Put it back to full opacity here. And the edge color would be something like this. And the emit color would probably be something like this. Yeah, that's actually good. So we just put, take down, we can actually go down here so we can better see it. Uh, let's remove that one and... Hello. There. Let's just put this one a bit down. And let's make it a little bit transparent. So now we can see there's a few objects under here. Just so we can see them a little bit, just slightly. Um, and the last thing we need now is just the ambient color. It's going to be a little bit, a little bit darker. Uh, something like that. And one thing we can also do to reduce the amount of light is another new. It's the shader light, which allows us to just turn down the light of the entire scene. As you can see here. So that's another new feature. We just take it down a bit here. And up again. So that does look a bit alike, uh, even though this is Far Cry with superior graphics, even though it's so many years old. Um, so I guess that was pretty much it for the new features. Uh, cloud density, screen glow. Yeah, that was something like that. So, so that was the easy way to match the colors of a uh, of a picture, and with the new eye eye drop slash color picker thing, this is a lot easier. Um, I've not added a save feature yet, but I guess I will go add a save feature for this one um, because also I have added a favorites feature for the normal environments. So if we pick a environment like this. Just deactivate this one. And if we really like this one, we could say, okay, we want to save it at favorites. We put in favorites, add new, and put a name. We say this is the sky blue. Okay, so every time we go into the favorites button, we have a sky blue setting, so we can you know, set Render Spring, for example, or Dune Marath, or just the sky below, which we saved. And we can remove them if we want to, too, so. And the same counts for Skybox. So if we want to add the Death Skybox, or uh, the Stars, or Caverns of Time, we can do that also. And uh, this, of course, also is a, is a good thing for uh, the, the color picker. Um, because if you have something like this and you want to match the colors of the skybox, you can always just go in here and take the fog color and just sample one of these colors here and you get something that matches automatically. So it's it's a lot better to, to for everything, basically, uh, with this new feature.